So I think, of course, everybody knows that Le Mal is one of the most flankered fragrances on the market. We've had everything from Le Beau Mal, we've had Le Beau, we've had countless summer flankers, and of course, Popeye Eau Fraiche, which is like one of my favorites. Here we have Pride Edition, came out in 2022. I initially wasn't going to buy it because I thought it was a collector's edition until I realized that it actually smells different from the original Le Mal, which came out in the mid-90s, so I'm excited to share my my thoughts on the smell with you, so make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin today's video and I tell you all about Le Mal Pride Edition 2022 by Jean-Paul Gaultier and I give you my thoughts on the notes, the smell, the performance, the longevity, comparison, so on and so forth, I want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it, hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel, and of course give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you took something of value from today's episode. Now, the perfumers for this are Quentin Biche and Natalie Graciacetto. Natalie has also done Le Mal Superman, Le Mal Popeye, and I think there was like an Airlines edition or something. All three of those are said to smell exactly the same, and I love those fragrances. Perfect for the summertime, the mint and the citrus. And then Quentin Biche has also done Delina by Parfum de Marly and countless other fragrances for so many designer and niche brands, including Carolina Herrera and Etat. Libre d'Orange. Here we have a fragrance that has a ton of citrus in it. There's Yuzu, Blood Orange, Neroli, there's Blonde Woods, and Musk in the base, and there are some clean white floral ingredients from what I was able to detect. In any case, I'm excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. Now the citrus appeal of this fragrance will hit you right away. Once you spray it, very loud, very effervescent, very cheerful and bubbly, and the citrus in here is very well-mannered, but you can tell it's very animated, very lively, and it definitely opens up this composition in a really nice way. So you are going to get this combination of yuzu and blood orange in the opening, and yuzu is a Japanese citrus ingredient that has a personality of being a little tart, and even perhaps a little bit on the green side of things, and I totally get that with this fragrance. Now, of course, there is a little bit of orange blossom and that contributes to the floral appeal in addition to some clean white floral ingredients that I perceive are in here. Probably a touch of jasmine all, if I'm not mistaken, just to give it this clean jasmine-like aroma. But you also get neroli. And I think the Neroli is what has warranted comparisons to Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino, which is part of the private blend line, and it is quite expensive, a few hundred dollars, and I'm sure the price has gone up again, either in the last year or this year. Now, this is a fragrance that I think is much brighter and much more citrusy than any of its predecessors. And I think even Fleur du Mal had a lot of that orange blossom ingredient. This has a lot more citrus in here to really make it more accessible. I know Fleur d'Orange is one of those fragrances where people kind of had like a love-hate relationship with. Some people really liked it. I personally really liked it for the uniqueness and the eccentricity of it. A lot of people weren't that crazy about it. They compared it to things that I would rather not mention on this channel. But this fragrance has a lot of citrus and I really enjoy the citrus that's in here. The Neroli is not as bright and not as evocative of the cologne genre like a Neroli Portofino or 4711 or something like that. There's enough of the other citrus in here to give it this diverse citrus personality in the opening. And then in the dry down, yeah, you do get some blonde woods. You also get a little bit of musk. You do have that floral quality that, I mean, kind of carries itself well into the dry down before the woods fully settle in. And even in terms of the woods that are in here, there's nothing overly sweet. I'm not getting sandalwood per se. Maybe a touch of guayac, if I'm not mistaken. But there is this clean sort of subtle wood 
woodsy personality. This is just a very well executed fragrance, but I think because of its linearity and the simplicity of the note breakdown, if you like something like Le Mal, Le Parfum, or if you like Ultra Mal, or if you like some of the darker expressions of the Le Mal franchise, this is not going to appeal to you. But if you're a fan of some brighter orange blossom citrusy fragrances, something that just has a clean personality, very easy to get along with, and as long as you don't have an aversion to notes like neroli and orange blossom, and if you feel that you're the type of person that can wear floral ingredients very comfortably, I think this fragrance will do very well for you. Personally, I've been enjoying it. My wife really likes this one too. She's a fan of anything citrus, so her nose is kind of skewed in that direction, so to speak. But all in all, I do think this is a really nice citrusy expression. The yuzu is not super strong, but it's nicely tart and green, and there's a nice balance of all the citrus without the neroli being the star of the show. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I was pleasantly surprised. I looked it up online and I saw that the note breakdown was quite different from the original Le Mal, which of course has the mint and the cinnamon and the vanilla. The Francis Kirk John composition is the one I'm alluding to. So I ended up purchasing it. Overall smell, very pleasant. And it is fairly unique. There's a lot of citrus and orange blossom fragrances out there. There's one by Zerzhov. I think it's Dajala. That one is like very strong, very much on the floral side of things. This one is a bit more tame, bit more subdued, definitely gives the citrus a bit more time to shine. In terms of the longevity, you're going to get about six to seven hours on your skin. You know, the citrus does amazing things for the projection of the fragrance, which is the first hour and a half of application well beyond an arm's length will definitely get you noticed. And then once that first chapter is complete and you get into the heart, that's when it does start to sit quite close to the skin. I would say right around that three and a half to four hour mark is when it starts to sit quite close to the skin. And it pretty much vanishes right around the six or seven hour mark. But this is one you can afford to over apply with or apply several times throughout the day. In terms of the versatility, Honestly, I think it's pretty gender neutral. I think anybody can wear this one. I think this one is great for casual wear. I think this one is great for the hotter weather. And I think this one will appeal to anybody of any age. In terms of the presentation, I do like the presentation. It's kind of cool. I think this is the first time that they dressed one of the Lamal bottles. I could be totally wrong about that. At least it's the first one that I own that actually has a piece of fabric or cloth on it. My final verdict on this fragrance is it's a great citrusy fragrance. If you're used to the complexity and the depth and the darkness of some of the other flankers, maybe this one is not going to be up your alley. But if you're looking for something very easygoing, casual, easy to pull off, and something that will also land you a compliment or two, definitely check out Le Mal Pride Edition 2022 by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload one of these daily videos on fragrance. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you learned something today. It would mean so much to me. Thank you for watching. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.